Hi, my name is Keegan Tawa, and today I'll be telling you about my software project, Pisces. Pisces stands for Procedural Iterative Stellar Evolution Simulation. In essence, Pisces simulates the birth, growth, and development of a very small micro galaxy and all of the astronomical bodies, stars, worlds, and species that you might find therein. Pisces makes use of a software paradigm known as procedural iteration. That is, nothing in Pisces really exists until you look at it. The contents of these solar systems will not be generated until you actually visit one of them. To be a little bit more specific, Pisces uses a procedural strategy that I like to call hierarchical detail. At program start, we do generate all of these star systems, but only in scant detail. All we really know about them are their positions, their orbital elements, their types and ages, their position on the main sequence, and that's really it. Here in the galactic scope, we are in the first hierarchy of detail, which I just described. When we descend into one of these solar systems, we enter a second hierarchy of detail. At this point, we generate all of the astronomical bodies that might belong to each of the stars in this system, like a protostellar medium, a volatile profile, planets, moons, and again, all of this only in trace detail. If we were to enter a planetary system, we would enter a third hierarchy of detail. At this point, things like the planet's material composition, its geothermal activity, atmospheric profile, continental formations, biomes and ecologies, geological cycles, and maybe, if we're lucky, life might be generated. All of these features are not simply generated at the instant of observation. When we do visit a planet, we roll back to the time of the planet's birth and simulate the planet's development across millions of years. In this example, I'll take us into a random solar system that I've never explored before. We'll generate its contents on the fly and see what we find. It looks like we have a K-type star system with a single orbiting body. Somewhat unremarkable, though if we took the time to open up this planet's information and explore it, we might find something of interest. Instead, however, I do know of a particularly interesting system that I'll take you to. I'll just pop in the coordinates here, take us in. All right, here we can see a binary system, a pair of G-type stars. If we step inside, So you can see here, these are two stars in a uh, mutual orbit around one another. The first star doesn't contain much of remark. Um, however, if we dive down into the well of the second star, we can see up front a planet with a lot of geothermal volatility, probably from all the tidal forces being exerted upon it. Um, but further back in the well, here we can see uh, a world that looks uh, pretty interesting. Um, predominantly water with some small land masses. It's atmosphered. If we dove down into the details of this planet and began to dig around, we would definitely find something interesting. Um, I would expect to see life here. Right now, Pisces data system does some very involved modeling down on the planet's surface to create ecosystems, biomes, and species. And if a species advances far enough, it can eventually become social and perhaps even form a society. A society can develop randomly generated linked ideology maps, values systems, sexuality, courtship practices, gender, maybe eventually species can even become self-modifying, and later species might even leave their home worlds. However, even though I've been working on the Pisces data system for a few years now, the Pisces visual system is only about a month or two old, so it's going to take some time to catch up with all the data that's being rendered on the back end. In future development, Pisces will have a ground system. It will have a dynamic timeline with which a user can view the galaxy and its systems throughout their past as well as in their present. It will continue to increase its realism and astronomical accuracy as I involve more and more subject matter experts with the project. And I will continue to work on its framework and performance capability so that we can render larger and more persuasive galaxies. 
In the future, I see Pisces as being a powerful tool for ambient education for both children and adults alike. Unlike a number of other current space simulation efforts, Pisces attempts to concern itself with astronomical realism as opposed to creating an adventure or gaming experience. Although, I do think Pisces could be wielded as a powerful back-end tool to create a gaming experience. I also think that Pisces is a powerful tool for introspective on SETI, the search for extraterrestrial intelligence. I like to imagine Pisces as a bit of a Drake's equation simulation, giving us a glimpse at how devastatingly empty, or depending on how you play with the parameters inside of Pisces, how surprisingly populated a galaxy like our own might be. I'll be providing a demo of Pisces this Tuesday, August 27th at the Franklin Institute. I'll be responding to questions and potentially even letting a few people fly the software. I'll share information in the comments Thank you for listening.